we're not gonna dwell on this because we've been here before. Long story short, last Friday, I'm headed to work in the morning. It's raining, didn't take the bike. Noticed a, uh, a bit of a shudder when she went into overdrive. And, uh, you know, took notice of it, right? Because that's not normal. And then on the way home that afternoon, um, noticed the shutter again, got to the interstate and uh, lost overdrive. Long story short, 3,000 bucks, full rebuild. Hey, went with a billet torque converter and uh, upgraded electronics and valve body this time. So we'll see how long that lasts. But the truck and its disaster of a transmission design is not the topic of discussion today. Um, if you're a regular subscriber, you already know this is a motorcycle channel. Specifically, this is a Yamaha FZ6R channel. This is Evelyn. If you haven't met, she says hi. And our pending issue, folks, our safety concern, our big uh, upcoming project is chain replacement. You can actually see how loose that is, right? <laughs> it, the thing about it is, um, that's the loose point, and if you rotate the tire to the tight point, the tight point's within spec, so it's that much of a variation um, in the, uh, the so-called chain stretch, right? Um, so anyways, in preparation for this project, and it's gonna be a full-on video, guys, because I actually spared no expense I went ahead and dropped coin on the Motion Pro PBR chain tool. It's considered to be the best one on the market. This thing, you know, it's about 85 bucks. I got a good deal on this one though. There was one guy selling one on eBay that was not uh, brand new in the cellophane wrap. This guy says he opened it just to see if the contents were there and I believe him because everything is still in wrapper and there's no scarring on any of the tool, so it's obviously never been used. And I got this one for 75 bucks, so I saved 10 bucks by uh, buying one that simply didn't have cellophane wrap around the package. I don't actually know how to use this tool, and so before we start our project, um, I am going to research and uh, Oh, hi, Rue. You learned how to open the door yourself, didn't you? <laughs> that's, uh, that's an issue. What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Oh, okay. We gotta, okay. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. You can probably hear him screaming inside. <laughs> Uh, he was none too happy about having to go back inside, but I, I can't do this and and <laughs> and keep track of him at the same time. Anyways, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, I'm going to do the research on YouTube on how to utilize this tool. Uh, it's supposed to be kind of um, ingenious by design with the way you can use this little block and just move its position to use the tool as both a uh, a cutter, so to speak and a rivet press so we'll uh, we'll figure that out and uh it'll be coming shortly in in our next video which will be yamaha fz6r sprocket and chain swap yep anyways uh so that's that that is that oh by the way i don't know if i mentioned i may have um i got it for 75 bucks from that guy so very happy about that saved a little bit of coin can't complain about that uh, anyways, so moving on, just got back from Home Depot and um, I was texting Texas Moto the other night because I cannot find on the internet at all uh, what size the front sprocket nut is. And I think he went out there and actually measured with a, a caliper or whatever and uh, told me it was a 30 millimeter. So went to the home depot and picked up I know it's a deep socket and all but it's all they had so it's whatever but it's a 30 millimeter so we'll be uh removing the front sprocket with that also I don't have a cutoff wheel here so I got to looking up on the uh the old interwebs there 
and discovered that they make these little chucks, what you call a, a blade mandrel, that goes into a cordless or, you know, a corded drill, whichever. I'm going to use the old Ryobi cordless drill. And uh, so, you know, it's just a regular chuck like any other drill bit or whatever. But it's a, it's a mandrel attachment. You unscrew that with a flat head and pop a little metal uh, cutoff disc on there. A little three inch blade. And uh, we will be able to grind off the uh, one of the rivets here. Because you want to grind these things off before you use that PBR tool. Otherwise it will break the tool. So you just grind these heads off. And uh, it will help ease the tension when you push the pins out. So we got that. So yeah. Uh, chain tool. Apparently the best one. <laughs> um, this mandrel chuck for the drill. Cut off wheels to remove the, uh, the rivet heads. Grind them down. And also... I got some awesome uh, degreaser. This is a new one from Simple Green. It's their extreme line. Motorsports cleaner and degreaser. So, in all the time I've owned this bike, um, can you see that in there at all? There you go. See all that grime? That is chain lube that has caked up inside behind this cover. Um, flinging off of the front sprocket there you go and uh, it, it has just created a mess inside there and I I've never ch uh, swapped chains myself before this will be a first-time deal and so we're gonna go ahead while we have this cover off and uh, you know all of this disassembled we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean all that up man because it needs it it hasn't been done before so I mean it's it's bad all that grime needs to be sprayed off of there. Um, so yeah. So we, uh, we have all this stuff collecting. The other thing we don't have is a digital caliper. And of course the sprockets in the chain. Whoa, easy, 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 easy. Alright guys, so here we are on my desktop. Um, again, I apologize ahead of time. If the audio is a little goofy. I do have my three boys with me. And they tend to be a little rambunctious from time to time. So uh, let's begin by discussing what we're not going to do. What we're not going to do is drop the front sprocket tooth to 15 from 16. Um, I know in a previous vlog I had really talked about um, being excited about the possibility of, of, you know, making the bike's acceleration faster. And you can do that by going with dropping one tooth in the front and going with a 15 tooth. And, uh, <clears throat> I've, you know, I've received a lot of advice from a lot of different guys, uh, mostly you, you guys, you subscribers, and, and I value your, your input and your opinions very much. And, and I do listen to you guys and uh, take all things into consideration. And one of the most popular opinions on dropping a tooth in the front with regard to the style of riding I do is that it would, it would not benefit me um, outside of just the, the, I don't even know how to say it. I commute on this bike every day. I'm on the interstate for 10 to 15 minutes, and uh, you know I'm doing 80 mile an hour at 7,000 RPM. From what I understand, going 15 teeth, um, I'll be doing 80 miles an hour at like 8,500 RPM, and you know 52 over 52,000 miles on my FZ6R. Uh, I don't want to have it spun up like that every day twice a day uh it's just it's not conducive to the longevity of the bike you know i've already got exhaust and and um uh pcfc fuel controller and all this going on you know I, i've got some performance done uh, performance stuff done to the bike as you guys know and so i am trying to walk the fine line between uh performance and longevity and with that being said, I I feel like the dropping the the tooth in the front is just not going to work um, uh, for what I'm trying to do with the bike. So uh, it is what it is, guys. I, I've I've decided against the 15 tooth uh, front sprocket for now. It's not to say it won't be done in the future. Perhaps after I get a valve adjustment done. Now, furthermore, it would require purchasing the speedo healer uh, to fix our speedometer, 
because it'll start showing us, I believe, going faster than we actually are if we were to uh, drop a tooth in the front. So uh, we'll be canceling this out. We'll be canceling this out. Aside from uh, from the sprocket and the uh, speedo healer, I had also discussed uh, performing the timing mod. Now that's where you uh, take the little timing wheel, you know, and, and you grind a little bit off, a little bit of material off of it, and it advances the timing by just a smidge. And uh, you apparently get a lot more power output throughout the power band. Uh, I'm I'm deciding against that as well, guys. At least for now. Um, I, I feel like, again, the bike, 52,000 some odd miles, uh, has never had a valve adjustment done. She has clatter on cold startups. And, um, you know, I, I just don't feel comfortable, you know. I, I don't feel comfortable performing those mods with respect to longevity of the motorcycle. So, uh, you know, I'm... <laughs> I'm not. I would love to get a new bike. I'm not exactly trying to buy a new bike right now, especially after dropping over three thousand dollars on a freaking transmission in the uh, the Ram. So, uh, reluctor wheel, I think, is what that thing is called. But anyways, uh, so we're not going to be doing that as well. You know, I, I feel like the bike is running hotter in between my legs, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> it, you know. Just sitting there idling in traffic, uh, you know, I can feel more heat radiating against my legs. It's 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 strange. Um, I'm pretty sure requiring a valve adjustment as as badly as I do um, results in the bike running a little hotter, and it's noticeable. So I don't want to advance the timing on the bike right now. It's it's just it's not conducive. So anyways, uh, just getting all that out of the way, I'm just trying to explain to you guys what we're not going to do. Because I previously, talk, previously talked about uh, doing these various things. So cross out the 15 tooth, cross out the speedo healer that would go with it, cross out the timing mod, and let's see. You know, I've got all these tabs up because these are all kind of talking points <laughs> that I've had. Uh, so the, uh, the sprocket situation, the chain and sprocket. Okay, so here's the deal. I would love to have that Cat 5 Vortex sprocket there in the red. Man, I think that would look pretty awesome. That is a good looking sprocket. That sprocket is also 60 bucks by itself. Okay, now look, we need a rear sprocket, we need a front sprocket, and we need a chain. Um, for example, 60 bucks plus 30 bucks. I mean, you know, even even the, uh, the stock 16 tooth uh, front sprocket by driven is you know 30 bucks uh, the, the tooth count really doesn't matter when it comes to price so we're talking about 60 and 30 that's 90 bucks the chain uh if you buy it by itself the did chain is currently only 77 dollars which isn't too bad uh that's the cheapest i've seen it so far but long story short let's fast forward to scrapping all this and being uh, money conscious, given our current situation, and here we go. BikeBandit.com has the DID chain, the VX2 uh, 520 X-ring chain, and front and rear sprocket. It's a kit, guys. I can't find this kit anywhere else on the internet, um, much less at this price. I feel like that is a fair price. 120 bucks. You get the DID VX2 chain. You get the front sprocket and the rear sprocket, um, Cromoly steel front and high carbon rear. You know you can't complain. It's stock replacements, but um, the uh, the guaranteed high quality of DID. So this is what we're gonna do, y'all. Um, we got all the stuff we just talked about. I'm going to pick up this kit here, under twenty bucks, and. Uh, yeah, that's that's my oldest singing in the background. He does that from time to time. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Uh, so we go this kit, 120 bucks, and uh, we picked this up today. You saw that a minute ago. Picked that up today. Got the the cut off wheels to grind down the heads on the uh, rivets. And last but not least, we've got to order uh, one of these little ten dollar digital calipers. The reason being, 
is it's very important to measure the um, the amount of press, if that makes sense, that the chain already has done on its other rivet links. And you want to mimic that exact measurement by the millimeter as much as possible when you press the uh, the new rivet, the master link. Um, you want it to be as close as possible. Um, so, you know, for 10 bucks, that'll knock that out. So, not too bad, man. We're looking at 120 plus, 10, you know, 130 bucks. Um, I picked up all that stuff today for 30 bucks. So, that's 160. Um, not too terrible. Versus if we were going to start, you know, 70 bucks for the Speedo Healer. And, and But again, um, it, it's not really all about the money. It's more so about the longevity of the motorcycle. Again, uh, so scratch all this stuff here, and we'll just go with Bike Bandit and this kit. Decent. Sweet, right? 120 bucks. Two sprockets and a chain. Can't beat it. I had no idea DID did this thing, man. And again, I can't find it anywhere else but uh, Bike Bandit. So there you go. Uh, anyways, guys, whew. I hope you guys have had a better week than I've had. Um, I don't wish a $3,000 expense on anyone. And, you know, I got to thinking about it. And uh, anytime I have to drop a, a significant amount of money on something, I, I, I tend to reflect on what else I could have possibly spent all that money on, you know. Uh, now, interestingly enough, uh, upon a little bit of personal reflection, um, I could not come up with anything I would have wanted to spend 3000 freaking bucks on other than another motorcycle, or at least a, a hell of a down payment on another motorcycle, right? So, uh, yeah, that was a bit uh, that was a bit disturbing. Had me a little perturbed. So uh, we got to concentrate on paying off that now. Uh, but, you know, life, man, it happens. Guys, this has been me. That has been you. It's been Half Click Up. Next video is going to be the uh, chain replacement and the sprocket replacement. So look forward to that. It'll be a full-on tutorial. Um, hopefully I can condense it down to uh, not, not, uh, not being too long because I've seen some of these tutorials on YouTube, and, and they're upwards of you know 45 minutes to, uh, to an hour long. So uh, we'll try and avoid that if at all possible. But you guys know me. Um, I am all about being very thorough, uh, especially because – uh, most riders on the Yamaha FZ6R are uh, newer riders, and uh, they appreciate uh, thoroughness in explanation and, and what have you, and I have an appreciation for that. Anyways, um, I'm going to stop dragging this out any farther. It's been Half Click Up, guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. I'm out here, and a good bye. You don't need to think this,